Hey everyone, so when I was younger, I worked in a machine shop and this experience really opened my eyes to the usefulness of a metal mill or a lathe when you're problem solving mechanical issues. Eventually I purchased both for my home shop and while I wish I had the space for the larger machines, my garage just wouldn't allow it and I had to settle for the benchtop variety. So today I wanted to make a video to demonstrate how useful this equipment can be when you're building your factory 5 kit. I'm going to start with my lathe. So my lathe is a Grizzly G602 10x22 benchtop lathe. And it's not the biggest lathe out there, nor is it the strongest, but it's a pretty well-rounded universal piece of equipment that you can do a lot of things on. I've also added a three-phase variable frequency drive to give me a variable speed, but that's another story for another day. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to spend time going over the different parts I made in my lathe for my Factory 5 build. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly, but I think you'll see how useful the lathe can be to problem solve when you're building a kit. I'm going to start with the air cleaner. So this is a problem I manufactured all by myself when I purchased an HEI distributor for a Ford motor and had to use an offset air cleaner. Now I could have gone to a smaller air cleaner size, but I think those look funny on a V8 and they also choke the motor. So to fix the problem, I machined an offset spacer with the fork draw chuck on the lathe. And the tricky part was adding that lip you can see there to snap into the air cleaner. But in the end, it worked out alright, gave me clearance, and it fixed my problem. So I thought I got a killer deal on my motor, until I saw this. What the? So there's a 90% chance the cause of this crack is a careless yard worker just prying the transmission away from the motor. I fixed this problem by making a custom offset dowel pin. And I did this by putting a 4 thou feeler gauge in one of the jaws of the chuck, and then drilling and tapping a screw hole on the back. So the reason for the screw hole, because the block is cracked, the interference fit between the dowel and the block has been lost. And having a screw on the back is an alternative way you can anchor that dowel. Is this fix good for 500 horse? Probably not, but neither is a Windsor block. Turning a camshaft bearing tool was purely a financial decision for me. And I say this because I couldn't fathom paying what Summit wanted for some of these tools, knowing I could machine it myself, and it would also be better. So why is it better? Uh, most of those tools use a rubber expansion ring to seat the bearings, and if you machine your own, you can machine them right to size. I was so happy with how the camshaft tool turned out that I made some core plug drivers too. And what these do is they take the seating depth out of the equation because I machined an edge into each one of the dies and then you can just drive the core plugs home. I built on this concept and did something similar out of a piece of PVC in order to seat the rear main seal because that's a tough one to get in straight if you don't have a tool. And similar to the core plug drivers it was real easy to make and it worked very well. I have a magnetic alignment gauge, and in order to use that to align my car, I needed to figure out a way to attach the gauge to the wheels. And again, I used my lathe to solve a problem here by turning a steel disc that I could just temporarily fasten to the center of the wheel. So is this a super duper laser within a millionth of a degree alignment? Well, no it's not, but is it good enough for a typical street car? Absolutely. In the back, the rotors had a lot of slop and were clunking when I was braking. And to fix this, I just machined a bunch of steel bushings to take up that slop. You'll note that my starting material was some old threaded rod. Recycle, reuse, baby. Under the hood, I machined a whole bunch of aluminum bracket spacers. And the advantage here is they're stronger than the ones that come with the bracket kits and the belt is perfectly aligned. A secondary benefit is they shine up nice too. In order to shoot primer with my existing paint gun, I had to drill out the air cap, and I used my lathe to make sure that hole stayed perfectly on center, and that way the needle will continue to seat correctly on the paint gun. 
My distributor had a lot of run out and it also didn't seat correctly in the block. So with my lathe I was able to machine it back into spec. One part I turned that I didn't use was master cylinder caps. And the reason I didn't use these is I wanted to keep things simple. Like no hoses and no clamps. But again it shows what you can do on a lathe. My milling setup is a Precision Matthews 30MV column mill. It weighs about 600 pounds and it has a 2 horsepower, 220 volt single phase DC drive. I'll add the power this thing can put out really helps make up for the reduced rigidity you typically find on a column mill. For example, I was able to drill out and power tap 5 16 threads into a broken exhaust stud at the minimum RPM setting. And we're talking this was less than 100 RPM. My first factory 5 project on this mill was to replace a cracked alternator bracket and you can see how I was able to design in some strength and conform the new bracket to the alternator. Similarly with the trunk prop rod I was able to take some rough measurements, lay out a quick design and machine a perfect fit. Most recently I machined an acrylic fuse box cover. My project for today is to machine a simple battery bracket to replace some half inch square stock I used as a temporary hold down at the go-kart stage of my build. And while functional, the square stock allows the battery to shift more than I like, and it's somewhat tricky to install too. Making this bracket is going to be rather simple, however I want to ensure it fits snug between the fill ports and the sides of the battery, so I'm really taking a lot of measurements here. Most of the time when you machine parts for your hot rod, the material you're going to use is either going to be aluminum or steel. So while the mechanical properties of steel are far superior to aluminum, only parts in the powertrain and the suspension actually need them to function properly. Me personally, I absolutely love working with aluminum because high speed steel and carbide tools, they'll just cut this stuff like butter. Coolant is somewhat optional, unless you're making some really heavy cuts or you're generating a lot of heat in your workpiece. And the material is highly corrosion resistant, especially when you compare it to steel. Well I've finished things up and again it's a rather simple bracket, uh, nothing too fancy, but I did add some captive washer slots and what this allows you to do is it allows you to install and remove the battery and the bracket rather easily. This is because you don't then have to 
remove lock nuts and the rods through a captive hole in the bracket. I'll again say that this was a very simple part to make. However, you should know that there are very few limitations on what you can design and make when you're machining things. Basically, your imagination and your ability to fixture the part are going to be the only things that stand in your way. Alright, well that's all I got for today, so why don't you leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.